We're excited to welcome to the wrap up, Megan Hilty and Jesse Mueller. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks, thanks for having us. us. All right, and thanks to our sponsor, Lifetime, for helping to put this together today. Um, so the film came out last year, and which I'm sure feels like even longer. Uh, yeah, kind the way of. Time at this works. point, yes. The yeah. way time works these <laughs> the world days. The world has changed a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little. Uh, and we're talking about it today. You know, the Emmys are almost upon us. You know, since the last time you guys were together talking about the movie, now people have actually gotten a chance to see it. I'm wondering what the response has been like from, from the fans. Um, it's been wonderful. I, I, I guess it's, you know, it's not, we, we really believed in it. We, we thought it was wonderful, but it, it's always nice when people really, when people really get behind you. I think Lifetime was really trying to do something different with this film. And um, I feel like the response we got back was sort of like, affirmation that, that that happened. I think people were really drawn drawn to these two women as, as characters in the story in a way that they haven't been represented in film or television before. So, um, and that's what we, you know, Megan and I really loved about it. It was about their friendship. I was surprised by how many people just said, you know, oh my gosh, it just, it floored me at the end or destroyed me or just made me think of all my girlfriends. And I, I you know, I, I called people and I got in touch with people. And so I was just thrilled to know that people made the connection with it that they did. Totally. And one of the things that we got <laughs> kind of a, a maybe not a, a lot is a strong, um, strong way to say it, but um, we did get quite a few people saying, you know what? Honestly, I started watching it intent on hating you guys because <laughs> I love Patsy and Loretta so much and I knew that you were going to disappoint me and I knew it was going to be this or that and I completely fell in love with this story with you guys I believed it you know I, that was one of the like those were some of the greatest compliments I thought because I I knew going into it that we were not going to meet everybody's expectations. Of course not. Right. Um, of course not. Uh, but I love how frequently people brutally, honestly say I I started wanting to hate watch, but um, but I ended up falling madly in love with with uh, with these two in this story. Well, it is a very, um, two very obviously iconic characters. And I feel like the country music world is also very focused. You know, it's, it's a very small community, not, not tiny, but like, you know, it's a very concentrated group. Is this the first time that you've experienced the world of country music and their fans? Uh, not, not for me. Um, a while back, I said, yeah, I did nine to five the musical. Oh right, yeah. Playing, uh, Another Dolly Parton. Role. Yeah, you might have heard of her. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Dolly, Odell. yeah, Dolly wrote all of the music and lyrics, um, and was a huge part of our um, of our workshop process leading up to our Broadway run. Uh, so I worked very closely with her on that project and um, threw myself into that world um, doing doing the research for, for that role, for sure. Yeah, and I was coming at it more from a fan. I'd never uh, had that much interaction with that, like you said, that that, that tight-knit community that is the country music family. I, I'd just sort of seen it from afar. So trying to get inside of it was intimidating, especially because these two women are so, so well-loved um, and rightly so. so um, it was a little bit of, of um, like noticing that and appreciating it and then and then having to like stop handling it with kid gloves and just get to work. So I think that was one of the one of the huge challenges of the project for me anyway. Yeah. You mentioned their friendship and I you know I didn't know the history of, of Patsy and Loretta too much. And then when mm -hmm. I started to read about it, what struck me was, you know, Patsy had this sort of mentorship for Loretta. But they were the same age. They were only, you know, about a month apart. Loretta Lynn and I share a birthday. Uh, oh. oh, April fourteenth. But you know, I would have expected, and forget even the dramatization of it. You know, two women the same age in the same field. You'd expect her to view Loretta as a threat, but that's that wasn't the case at all. Well, yeah, I, I think that's a, a normal way to think, given that that's usually the narrative that we're given with a majority of the the, the stories that we're told, um, and that's that was that's what was so wonderful about this script and uh, being a part of a story that promoted um, what I view as reality in for women in show business. All of my closest friends are all 
very successful uh, uh, entertain uh, uh, women in entertainment. Um, and so it's always been a little strange to me that the narrative always seems to be there can only be one woman and we're we're all fighting each other for that one spot um, <laughs> when when I know the opposite to be true um, and and with Patsy that's how she operated that wasn't uh, Loretta was not an isolated incident incident uh, uh, how she she treated Loretta was not uh, was not any different than any of the other women in country music. She was known for taking young women under her wing and saying, "Hey, this is how you get paid. This is how you conduct yourself as a business person. This is what you should wear, etc." Um, it, it just so happens that Loretta ended up being one of her very very closest friends because of it. Yeah, yeah their friendship throughout was really interesting for me to watch. I'm also wondering the scene that I enjoyed the most was towards the beginning of the film when Loretta's home with her family and she hears Patsy on the radio mm. and she just, it just sparked something in her. Right. And I'm wondering if there was any moment like that for you guys in your lives where you heard something, you know, maybe even when you were younger and it just, if there's like a, a, a moment, a, a song, a singer that, that sparked that same sort of feeling in you. I see it in your eyes, Megan. I want to know what yours was. <laughs> yeah, mine. She's I like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I remember it distinctly. It was Whitney Houston. And uh, my, my parents, um, uh, to cut a very long story short, my parents played me a lot of different music growing up. And um, and they thought it was really important to listen to a, a, a wide variety. So they were always like giving me stuff to listen to. And I very distinctly remember when Whitney Houston was played, I kind of, every, it felt like every, <laughs> this is dramatic, but it felt like every cell in my body, like, stood at attention. It was it, that that sound and that the the feeling and that she was able to um, transmit through sound waves was transformative. And um, and I remember that. I don't know how old I was, but I was very young. Um, and, and I will never forget how her voice uh, affected me and resonated mm -hmm. in, in my body. Wow. Jesse, do you have one like that? Whitney was one of mine too. She's one of the first like distinct female voices I remember hearing, you know, like beside my mother's. We had a Whitney Houston cassette tape and a James Taylor cassette tape in the car. Um, and then I would say the other one, honestly, was Jody Benson singing The Little Mermaid when The Little Mermaid oh, came out. Oh, yeah. I just remember that being like, what? What is, what is this strange magic? Like, <laughs> it, it, I just never, I didn't grow up on a lot of, uh, 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 sort of, I get what you call modern musical theater as a kid. Like I, I really grew up sort of with the classics. So I had never, I guess I'd never heard a, a, a singing sound quite like that before. To me, Jody Benson and that had a very sort of what we would think of now as like a musical, modern musical theater kind of sound. Sure. So I just remember that being transformative. I mean, she was also a mermaid. I'm sure that had a big, <laughs> that, she, that played a big part in it. I, I have an affinity for mermaids. She but. wasn't an actual <laughs> mermaid. Jessica. Right, what? the character. I know. I mentioned Jodie Benson, but what I'm talking about is Ariel. <laughs> yeah. Ariel had a great effect on me. That's true. Um, <laughs> did you guys have what was the training like for singing these country songs? Was that something? I mean, I know you did nine to five, Megan, but did that require a certain new practice, or how did you get into that place? So this is, I, I think it's safe to say this is one of me and Jesse's favorite things to talk about because we really, really enjoy nerding out over the technicalities vocal of technique, yeah. you know, vocal technique and like um, uh, it's it, taking the daunting stuff aside, you know, sure, we're we're pretending to be two of the most iconic and legendary. No pressure. Singers. No pressure. Country yeah. singers ever oh, maybe besides I, Dolly. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it yeah. was it was really fascinating um, to listen to Patsy's voice and really dissect um, how she made those sounds and maybe why I don't know uh, it I it was a really it was one of the most enjoyable parts for me for this whole process I'm not saying I did a great job but I really had a great time. 
uh, doing my research and um, and trying to figure out how that sound and what my natural sound like what that sounds like when you meld them together. Mm -hmm. So do you try and do it like Patsy or do you try and do it like you would or some you try and find the middle ground? I mean, very, very basically speaking, um, I try to see how to make basic sounds that she made um, and then and then f fill it with my actual voice because if I'm just trying to sound like somebody else then there's there's no soul in it there's no mm. reason for singing and it won't it'll just be a sound and it won't be um it won't be what, connected yeah right? it, won't it won't be connected yeah. Yeah, what Jesse says all the time, and uh, uh, it, and I completely agree, is that the most important thing about these two women is their authenticity. And mm -hmm. so, if I if I am just purely trying to sound like her, uh, and don't bring myself to it, um, then the authenticity that that very basic thing that they were so so well known for is gone. You know. Um, Gosh, I, I hope I haven't spun out into a different tangent. No, I think it's I think um, it's fascinating. Yeah, I no, I, you're, just, I feel like you're totally on the on the core of, of that. Yeah. And honestly, it was one of the first things we did in the production. It was like after getting the script and um, arriving in Nashville, where we shot the whole thing, which was so cool. We got to sh um, uh, to shoot it in Nashville at so many of the real places, including Patsy's real house. Um, oh, yeah. It, it, it was one of the first things we did was got into the studio and it felt a little bit like show and tell on the first day, but like you yeah. haven't met any of your classmates or the teacher. And so we got we got in the studio with Tim Lauer, who's amazing and, and produced the music on the film. And he was kind of like, OK, cool. So here's the track I made and let's give it a whirl. And Meg and I were both like, let's no, see what you got. Heard us sing like this. And, and it just <laughs> felt like such a. Uh, uh, in so many such so many ways such a risk but it was also like okay we're diving into the deep end of the pool like there is no there are no floaties in this situation mm -hmm. so we are just gonna we are just gonna jump in and it was like well here's what i've been working on what do you think so, and yeah um, with a lot of this stuff yeah i don't know megan did you i didn't work with anybody like a vocal coach or anything did you work with anybody not not going into it no yeah yeah, yeah. So it was a lot of so much listening, trial and error. Um, if I'm trying to do something really specific with my voice, I'll often um, just record on my on my phone, like on voice memos, and and try things out and then listen to it back. Because oftentimes, what I think I'm doing <laughs> doesn't what it sounds like in my head isn't always what it sounds like when it comes out. And right. it's like you said, Megan. It, I mean, there are so many things involved in the sound of someone's voice, the way they resonate, literally their bone structure, how much they want to be heard, how much they don't want to be heard. You know what I mean? Like it, it's how much of the voice is shown, how much of the voice is covered. It, it says a myriad of things. So it's really fun kind of like detective work to do. And um, yeah, I mean, it, already it's like if I could go back and there are so many things I would change or redo or like fine tune, you know what I mean? Is I, Of course, yeah. Um, but it's as always but it was no it was a, it was a total joy to just like dive in and how cool that they they let us sing those songs because they could yeah. have very easily said okay you're gonna lip sync to these you know classic songs but they didn't yeah. and because of that i'm so grateful because i feel like for me there would have been some some kind of disconnect mm -hmm. you know sure, um yeah. and um and why know. cast two Broadway singers if you're not going to let them sing? <laughs> I was just very, and it was very interesting that they used every song in its entirety. They didn't cut it down to, unless unless you'd already heard the song in its entirety. There's a couple songs that are repeated, right? Um, but everything's. I hope I'm not misstepping when I'm saying this, but I think everything is untouched. You know, in terms of the length. I think pretty much. I think that was really important to Callie too, who directed the film. Yeah. That it, that these songs really, really lived in in their, like you said, almost if not 100 percent, like 85 to 90 percent of entirety, because 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 of the artistic choices that these women made, because of the lyrics, because of the songs they chose to record, the structure was so important. You know, it was part of why these songs were so successful. In addition to their amazing performances, it like they chose great material. They worked with great producers. So. It was very important to, to to let the songs live, and and there were there were moments in the film where where the 
the songs really lived just as a performance segment. And then I think it was really smart how Angelina wove in, who wrote the the um, the script, uh, the screenplay for the film, how she wove in these moments too, where it wasn't quite song as monologue, but the song also lended itself very much to the emotional state of the characters, which I think was very cool. Yeah, like a musical. Like yeah. a musical, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you definitely feel like you're in the moment with them mm -hmm, when they're singing because mm -hmm. it can't feel like a performance. It has to feel genuine. Right. And I think right. It yeah. I'm wondering, Jesse, you know, obviously you won a Tony for playing Carol King in Beautiful. How did you approach this performance versus that one? Did you learn anything from from researching Carol King that you applied to how you decided to portray Loretta Lynn? Oh, I, t I totally did because I, I think one of the first things I remember thinking back was, well, you, you uh, somewhat I, I had to address all the fear and dread and like, oh dear, what have I what have I accepted? What did I just take on? And then try to trust like, okay, well, you did something kind of like this once before, and and it it, it wasn't a, like we didn't crash and burn, so we got like let's let's stand on that leg, and then also <laughs> trusting that that it's going to take time. I remember I was saying I record things on my phone and to, to work with vocal sounds. And I remember finding old voice memos from when I was working on Beautiful and working on trying to develop what was going to be my version of Carol King's voice. And I look back at some of them now and it's laughable because I was doing it step by step. Like I was taking out vibrato and then I would do this and then I would add this little thing. So you hear these sort of like these layers that go into building it. So I guess I knew that and, and I kept reminding myself that I have to start small. I have to start with one little thing and I have to start. And I also knew that I had to start with listening and I had to listen first with a really technical ear. And then I had to kind of back off. Well, I don't know if that was first. I had to go back and forth between listening with technical ears and listening uh, as a fan and listening for, for feeling, for vibe, for intent, for like what's the feeling I get from this and sort of and sort of looking at things that way too, not like like um, Megan said, not working for a mimicry, but working for what's the what's the essence of this person's singing, what's the essence of this song, things like that. So we're we're recording this in the middle of June. Um, things are starting to open up a little bit more and more. I'm actually back in an office. Oh, wow. Just a, couple days, just a couple days a week, just to sort of get the feeling again. And, you know, LA has, LA County has opened, you can go back to production with certain, you know, wow. restrictions and you have to meet certain guidelines. I'm wondering where you guys are at in your thought process now <laughs> of going back to work. Like, if, I don't know what your next projects are. I'm sure Broadway is in there somewhere, which is obviously going to be closed down for a little bit longer, but like, mm -hmm. How do you feel about the possibility of returning to a set soon? Um, I, I, I'm, first of all, I'm very fortunate in that I have a, I have a whole different career in animation oh, yeah. um, that has been able to, I've been able to keep doing from home uh, in our little studio that we've, that we've built in our house. And I have a feeling I'm going to be doing that from here for a very long time, even, even once the studios start opening because they're not going to be able to have a lot of people come in. Right. And I just would prefer to stay home, really. <laughs> um, uh, the, what, where it gets really tricky is with the, the public performances, like our concerts and, and stuff like that, and galas that we're scheduled to perform at. Um, I actually was on a very long phone call this morning about, you know, what were the protocols that, you know, what it would take to, for me to get back in front of an audience and mm -hmm. what I would be comfortable with. And it's the, the criteria, the list is, is long. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know. I don't know. I feel like so, so much is, uh, still, I guess, uh, not unknown. I, I just, I, I'm, af I'm afraid that, that we're gonna just start going too soon because everybody's just kind of over it you know yeah. and i'm not so i don't know it, it's it it i guess that's a long way of saying i don't know <laughs> it's, a, it's a totally acceptable thing it, it's i when i thought about coming back into the office i said to myself 
I don't think I feel uncomfortable, but I don't feel super comfortable either. Right, right. And it's a tough place to be in. And, you know, with what you guys do, you know, I'm just sitting in a room by myself. If you go back to a set or to a production, you're going to have hair people, makeup people, directors, you're going to be around a lot of people. It's a lot to take into consideration. Yeah. Jesse, I think I'm, you I were about to go back to Broadway. You had a play, uh, a, a musical that was just about yeah. to start. Yeah, I was in a play, uh, Tracy Let's the Minutes, and we were supposed to open this Sunday uh, that, well, Broadway shut down on a Thursday, and we were supposed to open that Sunday. So um, so we had been in previews, and uh, I was loving it. It's just, I love the play. It's such a great group. So, so that kind of just, right now, the producers have been wonderful right now. We're just hitting the pause button, and they're hoping to come back in the new year. Um, so that's a great possibility, but I, I am, I am so cautious about this right now. Like I, I, I don't know if I've just gotten, tried to get used to what we're experiencing and be at peace with that. Um, but I, I'm not ready to like enter back into life yet. I also, I feel, <laughs> I feel apprehension because I don't want things to go back to the way they were. Um, I think, I think we've, we've been faced with so much and we've had a mirror held up to us with so much in the past couple months and how much we need to stand up for each other and take care of each other and address a lot of a lot of really crappy stuff about our country and the way we're treating each other and i and it's like i feel very hesitant to jump back in like everything like everything is normal because it will never be normal again or we have to find a new normal so so I am I am biding my time over here, and I'm trying to take the time to figure out what I want to do next and where I'm needed next. So um, I'm pretty cautious. I'm still definitely a mask and gloves kind of gal. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is crazy how many people just don't wear masks, don't seem to care. It does feel oh, yeah. like, to Megan's point, everyone just kind of is slowly getting over it, and I don't think yeah. that's that's not going to work. <laughs> that, that doesn't work it with science. Yeah, no. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, one last thing before I let you go, Megan. I have to ask. Um, I never watched Smash, despite the fact that it seems like every single person I follow on Twitter does. I know you guys had the reunion recently, and now there's talk of a musical whenever you know we get back to whatever. Is that something you might get involved in? Will I have you return no, to being I, Ivy. Well, it. Here's the thing. A lot of announcements have been made. No phone calls have been made to me. So <laughs> as far as I know, I'm not a part of it. So that's right. I was supposed <laughs> to make some calls on your behalf, wasn't I? Right. Yeah. Because so, I feel like she told me this and I was like, oh, I was like, we got to. So. I mean, yeah. So I, I don't I don't know. I, I wish them well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but nobody's nobody. I, I don't think they've me. gotten very far with it. I mean, obviously, with everything that's going on. But it, it, there's something about that show that just people will never let it won't let it go. It's held very dear. Oh, no, and uh, apparently now with Broadway being shut down, a, a lot of people are revisiting it uh, so that they feel somewhat connected. You know, oh, somehow yeah, too. I, I've been hearing a lot of that, um, which makes which makes sense. And how great that there's there's a show that, you know, has Broadway production numbers with Broadway dancers and right. um, choreography. And uh, anyway, streamable? anyway, huh? Is it streamable? I think so. I don't. I don't know. I could send you the DVDs if you. Uh, yeah, I yeah, send me those DVDs, girl. No, I should go buy them, and you'll get residuals. <laughs> I actually, I actually, when I came into work the other day, there was one of those Netflix envelopes sitting on the front desk, and I was yeah. like, "Who is returning a Netflix right. DVD?" Right? Some people still get the DVDs. Yeah. I yes. didn't know that was still a thing. Yeah, it yeah. Is. very All much right. so. Megan, Jesse, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you again to Lifetime for helping put this together. I really enjoyed talking with you. Good luck. And I hope to see you guys again on a screen in a theater somewhere soon.